All right, guys, welcome to tutorial two, Metabolomics of Plasmodium falciparum in Human Red Blood Cells. My name is Spencer, and I'll be guiding you through this tutorial. So we have a few learning objectives here. The first one is to gain an understanding for how modern analytical techniques are used to study metabolism. The second is to gain an understanding of the workflow involved in culturing Plasmodium falciparum. The third is to gain an understanding for how raw LCMS data are converted into a useful format. And the final objective is to provide examples of met metabolic pathways changed between human red blood cells and plasmodium infected red blood cells by analyzing individual metabolites. There are gonna be a few terms and abbreviations that we're gonna come back to during this uh, PowerPoint. RBC stands for red blood cell. HPLC stands for High Performance Liquid Chromatography, although sometimes that's just abbre abbreviated to LC. MS stands for Mass Spectrometry. RPMI is a growth medium used mainly in cell culture. And M over Z is the mass to charge ratio as used in mass spectrometry. Malaria is caused by the intracellular parasite Plasmodium falciparum, which has a stage of its life cycle where it infects red blood cells. During this stage, it digests hemoglobin to promote parasite growth and replication. And this is the stage of that life cycle, life cycle that we're interested in here. Um, what is metabolomics? Well, metabolomics is the modern method used to study metabolites in biological systems. Now, often hundreds to thousands of metabolites can be visualized at any given po uh, time point. And the main analytical techniques that are used for metabolomics are the classic metabolism enzyme assays, 1HNMR, or nuclear magnetic resonance, gas chromatography mass spectrometry, that's GCMS, or LCMS. Uh, now these studies often require a significant computational component because those uh, gigabytes of data don't tend to analyze themselves. And if you look at this figure down here, I just have tried to show kind of the progress of omics as it goes from genomics, which is the genome of a biological system, to transcriptomics, which is that RNA that's generated from those genes. And past transcriptomics, we have proteomics, which is the proteins that are created from those transcripts. And finally, we have metabolomics, which is the metabolites that are catalyzed by the proteins. Um, so metabolomics is often called the endpoint of omics uh, for this reason. Okay, so I've included a video on D2L that goes into detail on the experimental procedure here, but I'm going to give it a brief overview just to refresh you guys. So seed culture of plasmodium falciparum grown in human red blood cells is quantified and visualized by gem sustain of a blood smear. Next, a combination of human red blood cells and RPMI growth medium is inoculated with this seed culture and left to incubate for four hours in triplicate. Uh, three of these control samples containing red blood cells and RPMI medium, but no plasmodium falciparum are incubated as well. So these are our controlled red blood cell um, treatments. The intracellular metabolites are extracted from these samples by combining an equal volume of methanol after the four-hour incubations. These 50% methanol metabolite extracts are then processed further and analyzed by LCMS. Now, plasmodium have evolved a unique metabolism due to its uh, parasitic nature. So they rely on converting blood glucose to energy via glycolysis in the TCA cycle, and also rely heavily on purine and pyrimidine biosynthesis to generate nucleosides and nucleotides for RNA and DNA synthesis. So just briefly here, I'm gonna go quickly over pyrimidine biosynthesis because this is one of those pathways that we're gonna look into in this assignment. Um, we're going to start at dihydroorotate for our purposes, which is then converted into orotate by the dihydroorotate dehydrogenase complex. Orotate is then converted to orotidine 5-phosphate by uridine monophosphate synthetase, um, and that uses a 5-pime phosphoribosyl diphosphate uh, and converts that into a pyrophosphate, and that uh, 5-phosphoribosyl diphosphate comes from the pentose phosphate pathway. Next, we have the same enzyme, uridine monophosphate synthetase, which is going to convert that orotidine 5-phosphate into uridine monophosphate uh, at the loss of a CO2 molecule. And UMP fur gets further uh, 
phosphorylated by ATP through the enzyme UMP slash CMP kinase to UDP, which is then phosphorylated further by nucleoside diphosphate kinase, again at the expense of ATP, uh, to become UTP. Okay, a brief overview of liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. And we don't expect you to understand all the details, but we do understand, we do expect that you um, gain an, enough of an understanding to interpret the data. So you begin it with this metabolite extract that's contained within the sample vial. And a small volume of that is going to get injected that any, anywhere between, um, you know, a fraction of a microliter to five or 10 microliters, which is then gonna uh, go onto an HPLC column. Now this HPLC column is, uh, has solvent running over it and the initial solvent is gonna be um, a type of solvent that allows most of these metabolites to stick to the column. As the run goes on, as the gradient progresses, it's either gonna go from aqueous solvent to organic solvent or vice versa, depending on the type of chromatography that's being used. And gradually, the, some of those metabolites are going to um, come off of the column and they're going to be detected by the mass spectrometer as peaks. That brings me to the mass spectrometer. So as these ions are coming into contact with the mass spectrometer source, they're going to get ionized by electrospray ionization, which is considered a soft ionization technique. Now, we don't want the, to blow these molecules apart in this case. We want them to be detected by the mass spectrometer in as close a form as they are in the sample vial as possible. And essentially using a high resolution mass spectrometer, we can infer the chemical composition of these compounds. So we can identify the chemical formula based on their high resolution mass. Now the, using the retention time and the exact mass of the signals, we can actually ident identify a molecular identity to them. LCMS data is a three-dimensional data. So we have intensity, which is a function of how many of the given signal is being detected at any one point in time. We have time, which is expressed as retention time here, which just represents what time uh, that molecule is coming off of the HPLC column. And then we also have mass to charge ratio, which in terms of metabolomics really is just a reference to the mass of the molecule. Because metabolites are small, we can infer that the charge is assumed to remain at one. That's either negative one in negative ionization mode or positive one in positive ionization mode. However, these data are required on negative ionization mode. So that's a nice feature of metabolomics here. <clears throat> the software that we're gonna to use to actually analyze these uh, data is called LMAVEN. That's a free tool. And you can go ahead and follow this link to download and install it. And then you can also download the uh, .mzxml files. Those are the actual liquid chromatography mass spectrometry files and a CSV file, which is gonna provide a compound list for you guys to go through. You can download those from uh, D2L under tutorial two. So we're gonna begin by clicking file and loading samples, projects, and peaks. We're gonna load those six mzxml files that you got from D2L. And you're going to assign sets to them by double clicking on the pencil icon here. And you're going to name them to 3RBC and 3Plasmodium or 3Malaria, whatever helps you uh, remember it. Now give these three a distinct color and give these three a distinct color as well using the paint bucket icon. Next, we're going to go file load compounds list. And you're going to use that CSV file that you got from D2L. And now note you can actually toggle between these two uh, modes here. You can toggle between samples and then compounds. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna unselect the show SRM list or hit F12. You can ensure the mass accuracy is set to 10 ppm. This should be by default, but you're, and you're gonna ensure that the chromatogram is not zoomed in by clicking that magnifying glass icon. Under isotope settings, you're gonna uncheck report as isotopes. And under options and peak detection, you're gonna ensure that this smoothing algorithm is selected, 10 scans and 0.25 minutes. So these should all be selected by default, but just to make sure. 
Lastly, you're going to make sure your peak quantitation type is area top, and you're going to make sure you save your project regularly so you don't have to redo these steps. Now, LMAVEN makes interacting with three-dimensional data much more intuitive by holding mass to charge ratio constant. So what you see plotted is signal intensity on the y-axis plotted against time here for a single mass to charge ratio. And you can scan through those different mass to charge ratios from the compounds list, or you can actually just type your own molecular formula into the search bar if you're interested in looking for other compounds that aren't on that list. Now the peaks represent compounds eluding off the HPLC column and being detected by the mass spectrometer. Um, so just keep that in mind. <clears throat> for this tutorial, you'll be required to peak pick. So to pick a peak, you simply double click on it and Elmaven will save this peak into the bookmarks table, which is just uh, located down here. To access that bookmarks table, go ahead and hit F10 or show the bookmarks widget, which is right here. So we want you to peak pick the entire compounds list provided. The chemical formulae and retention times are also provided, so the peak should be pretty unambiguous. But sometimes the compounds will have wide peaks, uh, which is a case of non-ideal chromatography. And what we want you to do is just pick the highest point of the peak here, just like this. Um, at some points, you'll notice that there are going to be multiple peaks. If that is the case, then choose the peak with the right retention time based on that CSV file that we chose. So, um, you know, if one of one of those compounds has a, one retention time, then go ahead and match that. If another has a different retention time, go ahead and match that. Once you've picked all your peaks, you can go ahead and export them as a CSV file by clicking this button here on the bookmarks table. Importantly, we want you to export all groups and we want you to save as a group summary matrix format, comma, delimited with set names. I know that's a mouthful, but um, if you save it as anything else, it's not going to come up properly. In the saved CSV file, area, area top will represent your peak intensity. Now this uh, CSV file will serve as the basis for your assignment. Next, using the data you've acquired, go ahead and follow the prompts of figure assignment, which is worth 1% of your final grade, the discussion assignment, which is worth 2%, and the report, which is worth 1%. Come prepared to the tutorial. You may find it advantageous to try using the software beforehand, and you should definitely have it installed. Uh, go ahead and please bring any questions to your TA, if you have any more. Thank you very much, guys, for listening to this uh, presentation, and I hope you find this uh, tutorial useful and interesting. Thanks again.